What you're about to see is not real news. It is satire based on real news. The characters you're about to see are not real-life humans. They are frighteningly realistic puppets based on real-life humans. The views expressed in the show are not necessarily those of Starsat, its sponsors, its advertisers, or the nice lady that makes the coffee. The year is 2014, and the streets are out of control. The police can no longer be trusted. I really don't see what all the fuss is around crime. Hello? I can't be in here. I'm really sick. Seriously, check this. <laughs> the old solutions have failed. Stomach out, chest in. No, wait, that wasn't it. Stomach over, chest under. Wait, I'll get there. Just give me a moment. But a new era is about to begin. Mr. President, we need a new kind of police force. The protesters just won't listen to reason. I've offered them discounts on McMuffins. I've let them touch my Maybach, but nothing works. We keep saying, order comrades. But they keep saying, no, 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 no. Uh, gentlemen, the answer to your prayers. Robocop! No! Robocop has a human heart. He feels pity. He uses his judgment. This is the next generation. Gentlemen, this is a rear cop. Rear cop engage rhetoric. If you don't hunt in a pack, you can't even put down a limping bull. No doctor can doctor herself. I am taking the poetry course that you have made. I have put the carrots aside now. I am going to the potato. No compassion. No accountability. No clue. Rhea Cop. Greetings and good evening, comrades, commissars, commanders in chief, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to Puppet Nation, where you pull the strings. I'm Justice Malala. And I'm about to lose my job. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's finally happened. I've had my job outsourced to a third world country. Deborah, firstly, your job hasn't gone anywhere. And secondly, the United States is not a third world country. Former British colony, always at war, religious fundamentalism, and a Kenyan president. It's a third world country, Justice. Okay, whatever, but nobody has taken your job. Then why is Soft Peely coming back to do the news? Not all the news, Deb, just... <sighs> Ish, I'm sorry about this. We are going to make a formal announcement, but Deborah has kind of let the cat out of the bag. Out of the douchebag? Uh, what Deborah is referring to is our new American colleague in New York, the veteran news anchor, the respected, the admired, the award-winning Mr. Scott Pelly. Like I said, soft Pelly. I can't believe you're being like this. He will only report on what's happening in the USA. Our jobs are safe. Yes, just like the six million job opportunities promised by the ANC. Ah, forget it. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very proud to be able to cross over to our New York bureau, where Scott Pelley is standing by with the latest American news. Sure, because a South African news show made for South Africans by South Africans featuring South African news should always start with American news. Come on, Justice, open your eyes. It's over. <clears throat> Scott, take it away. <laughs> As Ukrainians watch their country being torn apart, both President Obama and Russian Vladimir Putin's approval ratings have soared. The two leaders spoke about the situation this week. Vlad, seriously, thank you for the solid, comrade. It's no problem. No, thank you. You picked a country to invade that's totally out of my hands, so I don't have to do anything except go to TV and condemn you and grimace a lot and, and act super presidential. Really, this has been like a, a perfect crisis. Hey, I do what I can. 
but seriously, I need to discuss with you sanctions you place on Russia. Okay, talk to me. Big, big help, my friend. Every time you announce more sanctions, my, uh, how you say, uh, approval ratings go through roof. Tell me about it. Works like a charm, right? Uh, by the way, whose bank account should we freeze next? I, I was looking at the list you gave me. And maybe that rich uh, tech guy, uh, Victor Veselberg? Yet, yet. He and I have a poker game on the Wednesday. I think Sergey Galitsky, owner of huge Russian supermarket chain, he raised price of my favorite moisturizer. Consider it done, buddy. And uh, hey, enjoy Crimea. Спасибо. Peace out, homie. While visiting China, President Obama's wife Michelle called for the communist government to allow freedom of speech. Here's a clip of her appeal directly from the official Chinese news agency. Good evening, friends. I'm so happy to be here in Beijing tonight to talk about the fundamental right of freedom of speech. On behalf of Comrade Brother President Field Marshal Robert Gabriel Mugabe, I welcome you and your fact-finding mission to Zimbabwe. Thank you, Comrade. Did they feed you on the aeroplane? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, did you eat it all? What? The food from the aeroplane. Yes. Oh. What do you mean, oh? No, it's just uh, I haven't eaten since Tuesday. And I was hoping that uh, you maybe kept a roll or one of those little yogurts for later. And uh, maybe you could... Uh, what? Maybe you could give me some. But where is your food? What happened to land reform? No, we did land reform. Lots of land has been reformed. So why are you hungry? Because we are growing tobacco and uh, you can't eat tobacco. Chief! That is not true. My uncle ate tobacco until he died of mouth cancer. Comrade, where are you getting your food? Uh, well... Spit it out. That's what my auntie always said to my uncle. We are getting our food from South Africa. So let me get this straight. You are starving because you are using your revolutionary land to grow tobacco that you sell to American imperialists and you are eating food grown by the ungovernable Bure in South Africa? The revolution is very complicated, comrade. Must I record that for a fact-finding mission, chief? No. But it's a fact. No, it is not. Is that a fact? Shut up! I will concede that he's not terrible, but really his chin... It's an American chin. It's like John Wayne. Yes, but it looks like a bum. Oh, jeez, Debra. We have to take a short break right now, but don't go away. We'll be right back. Like a stupid little bottom grafted on just under his mouth. We'll be right back. Gluteus minimus, wobbling away on the end of his face. Can't we just go to a break, please? All the super duper rugby all the time. The 2014, 2015, 2016 never ending rugby season all year. So many teams we can't even name the names because there are so many of them. Everybody against everybody, everywhere, all the same time. South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, Australia, South Africa. South New Zealand, New Africa, Austro Africa, Zealand, who cares? It's rugby, rugby, rugby! Super 5, Super 13, Super 22, Super 419, it could be anything. Rugby. More rugby. Super rugby. Super duper rugby. <gasps> rugby! Super duper rugby on super duper sport all day, all year, whether you like it or not, and if you don't like that, fuck you! Welcome back. You're watching Puppet Nation. The show where we sell ourselves to the great Satan and then the NSA pulls the strings and makes us dance like all other puppet states. 
so now it's a big conspiracy. Your words, Justice, not mine. Because just now it was just your job getting outsourced to Scott Pelly. I don't make the news, Justice. I just report it. Ah, that's a good idea. Let us do our job. Report the news, okay? Whatever. <laughs> Newspaper reports claim that President Zuma lied to the public when he said his family members had not benefited from the security upgrade at Inkandla. The homestead of Zuma's late younger brother was among three that cost taxpayers almost 8 million rand when they were relocated to make way for the upgrade. The other two homes were those of his nephew and cousin. The president does not lie. He said he paid for his family's homes. In this context, you need to understand the definition of family. With respect, Mr. Maharaj, that reminds me of the time that Bill Clinton said it depends on how you define sexual relations. In terms of the executive member's ethic act... Which the public protector said the president violated. Let me finish. In terms of the executive member's ethic act... Violated! (coughs) Family equates to dependence, not consanguinity or affinity. What the hell is he talking about? No idea. Humor him. He might be dangerous. Oh, for God's sake. Do you people know nothing? Consanguinity means relationship by kinship. And affinity means relationship by marriage. Do you get it now? Not really. So, when the president's legal team told the public protector that the people whose homesteads were relocated weren't family... They weren't? Oh, come on, Mac. We're talking about his brother, cousin and nephew. Where I come from, that's considered family. That's right. Don't you people have this extended family thing? Us people? Look at it this way. Imagine there are six chickens three of which have different fathers. Oh, God, no. Not an extended Mac metaphor. Sorry, Mac, we have to go. Phew. Thanks. That was close. A new survey conducted by the Sunday Times has revealed that the ANC could win a two-thirds majority in the upcoming elections. And who do we have to thank for that? Excuse me? The Democratic Alliance, that's who. They've been suggesting that the only thing really wrong with the ANC is Jacob Zuma. The DA is so obsessed with attacking the man that they have let the party off the hook. Mulweni Ninjani. And here's the return of the closer blank. Miss Zilla, is Deborah right? Has the strategy blown up in your face? Zuma, 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 Zuma. See what I'm saying? Mm, yes, she had a bad case of the Zubas. Miss Silla, your party has basically sent out a message saying that the only thing wrong with the ANC is Zuma. Zuma, 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 Zuma. And as a result, people have simply disassociated Zuma from the ANC and have continued to support the party in large numbers. The latest survey shows that they could get a two-thirds majority. Two-thirds is just a number, Zebra. Uh, I beg your pardon, uh, Deborah. Uh, This election is not about numbers. It's not? Now I'm really confused. The point is this. It was a very different ANC under Nelson Mandela and even Thabo Mbeki. It was an ANC that got things done. They worked for the people. They did great things for this country. You've joined the ANC, haven't you? Don't be ridiculous, Deborah. My blood is blue. I am a DA through and through. I did a survey this morning and the results indicated that we are going to win 66% of the vote. Uh, who exactly participated in this survey? Well, let's see. There was my husband, which was a representative of the white vote. Then Betty, my domestic worker, who is a representative of the black vote. They're both voting DA. How did you get 66% of only two people participated in your survey? Oh, yes. I also surveyed Timber, my gardener. He said he would vote for the EFF. He is a representative of the idiot vote. So according to your poll, the ANC will get no votes at all? That's right. And it's all because of one man. Please don't. Please don't. It's too late. She's off. Zuma, 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 Zuma. In Kandla, 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 Zuma. Zuma, 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 Kandla. Zuma, 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 Kandla. Zuma, 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 Zuma. 
public protector Dili Madonsela says she feared for her life during her investigation into the Encantla upgrades. Oh, please, I used to fear for my life when I did third degree. It's hardly the same thing. It's true, but I wasn't really worried that someone in government would order a hit on me. Yes, it would take way too long. For a start, they'd have to put out a tender for an assassin. Then a long list would be submitted to a subcommittee. And a short list submitted to a committee. And by the time they found someone to whack to, Lee Julius Malema would be president. (laughs) (laughs) (coughs) Uh, Guys, I'm still here. Uh, sorry, we haven't slept in a while. He doesn't mean we haven't slept with each other in a while, if if, if that's what you're thinking. Anyway, sorry, um, you were saying something about fearing for your life. I was worried that all the negative comments from government and the ANC might inspire an ordinary lunatic to terminate me. You mean an ordinary lunatic as opposed to one who works for the government? Something like that, yes. There are a lot of crazy people in this country. Did the state attorney, the chief state law advisor and several cabinet ministers really demand that you stop your investigation? Like I said, there are a lot of crazy people in this country. So, Tuli, what's next on your agenda? Another investigation. Wow, really? Yes, I'm going to investigate the cocktail menu at a resort in the Seychelles. Well, that's one trip taxpayers would be happy to sponsor. Do you need an assistant? I've really got nothing on. We we can leave right now. Please don't say I've got nothing on. It's a terrible image. Yo! You did what the government couldn't. You scared the public protector off. And you ain't seen nothing yet. Coming up, she's with me in hard shot. Poor woman. She, She didn't deserve this. Hello and welcome to another episode of Hard Shout. She's a woman who has come to symbolize integrity, the pursuit of truth, extreme professionalism and the struggle against corruption. Her name, of course, is Deborah Patter. But enough about me. Tuli Madanzella, over to you. What do you think of me? Um... Only kidding. They're not really. I do want to know what you think of me, but let's wait till after the show, just in case you say something that forces me to punch you in the throat. Wow. I know, right? As President Zuma said, as he stood next to the fire pool, let's jump straight in. First up, a question I know many viewers would love to ask you. Knowing what you know, seeing what you've seen, how do you not go batshit cray-cray with rage? Well, Deborah, you know, anger seldom achieves anything. I I literally have no idea what you just said. Are you trying to tell me that blind rage doesn't take complex discussions forward? Because if you are trying to tell me that, then I am going to get very, very angry. Deborah, that's just fear. Up yours, Maranzella. I'm not afraid of anything. Nothing? Nothing. How about showing us your real skin color? I swear, if you touch my bottle of orange... Deborah, fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Did you just quote Yoda? Very wise, Yoda is. You know what I think? I think this whole Zen thing you've got going is a front. I think under the serene face and the soft voice, there's a seething volcano of hate. Nope. Come on, just once, let it out, just once for me. One long, blood-curdling scream. Will you stop asking me questions if I scream? Deal. Okay. (coughs) Ah. There you have it, South Africa. Under the mild exterior, a demon banshee queen, spitting bile at anything that moves. Deborah, can we talk about my work? I don't know how much longer I can hold her off, but I know we'll agree that rational debate was the winner today. For hard shouts, I'm Deborah Patter. Is that it? Is it over? You're going to have to dart her. Seriously, jeez, it's scary to see someone lose it like that, eh? Deborah? Yeah, just get her in the thigh or the neck, then we can winch her out. There's nothing quite as sophisticated as the Ambassador's balls. Mr. Ambassador, your balls are so small and crinkled. 
put one in your mouth, caress it with your tongue, and experience true elegance. Mmm, I love the ambassador's balls. Tastes like nuts. The ambassador's balls. Balls never tasted so much like nuts. Welcome back. You're watching the CBS Nightly News with Scott Peely because apparently you want your news presented by someone with buttocks on his face. Deborah, enough! Wow. You're quite sexy when you're angry. He's not replacing you. Nobody is replacing you. You are co-anchor for life. The only reason he's on our show is so that we can reach a wider audience. You mean more people seeing me? Many more. How many more? Millions. Man many millions. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your latest headlines. EFF leader Julius Malema has vowed to put pressure on the police to arrest President Jacob Zuma. Malema has laid charges against Zuma in the wake of the Public Protectors and Cutler report. I want to know when they are arresting this criminal Zulu boy. Mr. Malema, you've laid charges of fraud and corruption. And theft and racketeering. Do you honestly expect the police to rock up at the union buildings, handcuff the president and toss him into the back of a police van? They must put chains on his legs too, in case he tries to run away. Fraud, corruption, money laundering and racketeering. Yes. That is what I'm talking about. Those are the charges you are facing, Mr. Malema. What? Bloody agent? Why are you talking about my charges? We are here to talk about Zuma's charges. I just find it interesting that they are so similar. You were once the apple of the president's eye, and you know what they say about apples. Uh, one a day keeps the doctor away. Yes, but also that it doesn't fall far from the tree. Don't be stupid. I never fell off a tree. Except maybe once when I was at my gogos and there was that naughty dog. Mr. Malema, I'm just saying that there was a time that Jacob Zuma was like a father to you. And you were like a son to him. You said you'd kill for him. Don't be chacharag, bra justice. I was young and he fooled me. This is now. And now I'm a commander in chief. And now we want to see that criminal behind the bars. Well, let's just say your wish comes true, Julius. Have you considered the possibility of you and Zuma ending up in the same cell? Uh, uh, okay. Next question. German customs officials have intercepted a package addressed to the Vatican containing 14 condoms filled with cocaine. Officials said the coke, worth over half a million rand, was posted from a South American country. Pope... What's his name again? Francis. Are you sure? That's a girl's name. I'm bloody sure. My name is Pata. I'm Italian. You don't think I know what the Pope's name is? <clears throat> Pope Francis? Yes, my son. There's no easy way to put this, so I'll just come right out with it. Do you guys in the Vatican use cocaine? Justice! Oh, my son, you must be talking about uh, last week's surprise delivery. I am very angry about that. I can imagine the last thing the Vatican needs right now is a drug scandal. Cocaine in the Vatican is one thing, but condoms. Contraception is the devil's work. Your Holiness, are you saying you would rather have the cardinals wired on whiz? Well, it takes forever to get anything done around here. Maybe a little bit of uh, Colombian marching powder is uh, just what we need. I don't know whether to say five Hail Marys or drink five Bloody Marys. Forgive him, Father. He knows not what he says. <laughs> Father? <laughs> Most Holy Father! Sorry, I was just um, sneezing. <clears throat> I feel uh, something funny uh, up my nose. And finally, soaring legal costs have forced murder-accused Oscar Pistorius to put his Pretoria home on the market for about 5 million rand. Not a bad price for a place like that. Hey, why don't you put in a cheeky offer? Oh, God, no, I couldn't. I, oh, I just couldn't. I feel sick even thinking about it. <laughs> Is it the idea of having to live in the house where he shot his girlfriend? No, it's the idea of having to deal with the state agents.
Hello, Zach. Mr. President, I'm Trevor. No, you are not. Trevor is much older than you and is bald. Trevor, no one, Mr. President. Zach Galifianakis is the American comedian who does Between Two Ferns. Yes, that is what we are doing today. Um, about that, sorry guys, I'm really uncomfortable with just ripping off another show like this. We are not ripping it off, Zach. We are redeploying it to save the movement. Okay, so if I can just get this straight. You saw Zach Galifianakis interviewing Barack Obama. You saw that it got like a billion hits online. And now you want us to do the same thing here? Exactly. I'm really uncomfortable with this. I am really uncomfortable with Tulima Donsela, but we all make sacrifices, Zach. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Mr. President, welcome to Between Two Pop Plants. Thank you. So, are you going to be fired by the ANC or just fire pooled? Cut! What, 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 what did I do? You can't ask me questions like that. I am the president. Two-thirds of two-thirds of the people who voted for the ANC elected me as their leader. Okay, two-thirds of two-thirds is 44%. So technically, you're the president that nobody wants. Security cluster. Code red. I repeat, code red. Okay, um, how do I explain this? Uh, the whole point of Obama going on between two firms was to prove that he's hip. You know, a man of the people, a guy who can take a joke. Zach, I can take a joke. I can take it. I can have it classified and lock it in the basement at Latuli House and nobody will see it until Jesus returns. Wow. Okay. I think that's a wrap. Did we get it all? Good. YouTube, here I come. <laughs> <laughs> Ish, this is gonna spread like a virus. Well, we started our show on shaky ground, but I'm happy to report that the harmony has been restored, thanks to our new American audience. Oh my effing G, the totes love me! Deborah, you're so orange. Please be the president of Orange County. <gasps> oh, thanks, guys. We're out of time tonight, but please join us again next week for... Deborah, you clearly have the heart of a young child in a jar in your fridge. Oh, thanks, Duane. I really appreciate that. So until next time, this is Justice Malala signing off for... Hi, guys. Please keep the text to Deborah coming. We really need the Scott Bailey thing to work. If she knows it's us sending the text, not the Americans, she will cuck herself, and then we will never hear the end of it, Justice. <sighs> oh, shit. You got the production interns to send all these? You are... Please don't hurt me, please. Just the sweetest man. Oh, Justice. What did I do to deserve you? I ask myself the same question every day. I have to kiss your head. Bye, everyone. Good night. Hey. Oh, okay, Deborah. Oh, Deborah.